The Mets have been a better baseball team over the last month and a half, and there are a lot of reasons why. One of them, speed in the outfield. Speed on the base paths, all coming from outfielders who were not with the team at the beginning of the year. And Terry Collins has liked what he's seen. At City Field in New York, the New York Mets play the Colorado Rockies. Tonight's game is presented by New York's 529 College Savings Program. Have a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez, Ron Darling with you tonight as the Mets play game two of their three-game series against the Colorado Rockies. Last night, the Mets pulled out a 3-2 to two win, and the legs and the glove of Eric Young had a lot to do with it. In fact, Young has had a lot of highlights on this homestand. Yeah, he really has. You know, the thing about Eric Young, he can beat you in so many different ways. On Friday night against the Kansas City Royals, he walked them off with a home run. Um, he also, with the great speed in the outfield, this is something and you never saw the first two months of the same season covering that much ground. Of course, he's stolen 15 out of 19 bases, and then this play on the infield single from Lagares, able to go from second base home and score quite easily the go-ahead run for the Mets. So Young has been unbelievable, 23 and 20 since he's joined the Mets. And alongside Juan Lagares and Marlon Byrd, it's been a very productive outfield offensively and defensively. A big change from the start of the season, and the Mets almost confirmed that today when they optioned Lucas Duda to Las Vegas. He'd been down there on a rehab assignment. This change in the middle of the season has kind of been made on the fly and maybe a change of philosophy as well. Well, it's not the first time that organizations make uh, changes as the season progresses. Remember, Colin Gal Calgill had a terrific spring training. He won the job in center field. You had Duda out in left. Now it's completely been transformed with speed and defense. This is a very big ballpark. Terry Collins said around a month ago when his team turned it around that the reason why we've turned it around is because we're pitching well and we're catching the baseball. Well, that means out in the outfield. This is a very big park. You've got to tailor your, your, your team to the ballpark you play in, and this team has to rely on speed and defense. And that improved outfield defense certainly helps the pitchers as well. Matt Harvey goes to the mound tonight, and... Uh the Met pitchers can pitch with confidence with that outfield the way it is. Well, it has, but Harvey's kind of had a funny season, hasn't he? 4-0 in his first four starts, and then it's really dried up offensively. He's 4-3 since then. His ERA has been outstanding. His numbers are outstanding, but has not gotten a lot of offensive production. And as the Mets send their ace to the mound tonight, so will the Rockies right-hander Julius Chassin. He's had the same kind of year. Started 3-0, hurt his back, came off the DL, went 0-3, but now has got his record to 10-5 by going 7-2 winning five straight at some point. And he's been amazing away from Coors Field this season. So it's the Mets and the Rockies. Matt Harvey Day at City Field. All the action coming your way tonight on SNY.
Brought to you by New York's 529 College Savings Program. By Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. By Parts Authority. Auto Parts Superstores, where the answer is always yes. By Elysium, from the director of District 9 in theaters August 9th. And by Audi. Truth in Engineering. MLB.com at bat is celebrating five years as your number one mobile app for live baseball. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At bat delivers Mets baseball with live audio, stats, highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Mets.com for details. Drive around the majors presented by Cadillac. Afternoon baseball today. Jay Bruce Homer drove in three. Reds beat the A's 6 5. The A's lead down to a half game in the American League West. Chris Davis snapped a 3 3 tie with a three run homer in the eighth, his 41st of the year. And the Orioles beat the Padres 10 3. And the Mariners were down 7 2. Umberto Quintero just acquired from Philadelphia. He had a three run homer, and Seattle leads Toronto 9 7. Matt Harvey ready to make his way in for his 23rd start of the year. Harvey Day at City Field. Matt's first pitch is coming right up. mid-June. He's played 41 games for them and he's had a huge impact. None more than last night when he used his glove and his legs to help the Mets to a 3-2 victory. The Colorado Rockies today place their star Carlos Gonzalez on the disabled list with a sprained finger so he's out tonight. And Charlie Blackman who had a pinch hit home run last night will get the start in left field instead. Otherwise the same lineup that Walt Weiss ran out there last night. He's got only a four man bench. They brought up a pitcher Jeff Francis to replace Gonzalez. Well Harvey looked awfully good in his last start through five innings but was tested in the sixth and gave up a three spot. No offensive production from his mates and took the loss in his last start against Miami. 
And the Metropolitan Lexus defense. Lagaris with a strong arm. He displayed it last night on a shallow fly ball that no one would have tried to score on. Throw a dart home. We talked about the outfielders. Those corner outfielders made two outstanding plays last night coming in on balls. That's Young and Bird. Davis, Murphy, Quintanilla, and Flores round out the infield. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Cholula Hot Sauce at the City Fields Fan Fest and step into the cage to test your luck against the Cholula Flamethrower. Available in four flavors. Cholula Hot Sauce, the flavorful hot sauce with the iconic wooden cap. First batter of the game has had one hit and one walk against Matt Harvey wow. this year. Dexter Fowler will lead things off for the Rockies. He was 0 for 2 with a pair of walks last night. The Rockies have now lost three in a row, seven of their last eight after being a threat in the National League West early in the season. They have fallen rapidly over the last two months and now just trying to keep their season afloat. Fowler, a switch hitter, much better right hand hitter than left, and he'll hit left handed against Harvey, who did not give up an earned run in his first two starts out of the All Star break, but allowed three in that sixth inning in his last start against Miami. And ready to go. First pitch of the night is in for a call strike at 94 miles an hour. Fowler had a breakout here last year. He's had not quite as good a year this season, but he does have 12 home runs. And Harvey misses away, ball and a strike. Matt was just about perfect for his first five innings against Miami that last time out. Gave up just one hit in the first five. As Fowler lifts one to left center, over in the gap comes Young. And at the end of the warning track, pulls it in for the first down of the night. Well, you know, Harvey's pitched so well this year. He's had two outings and where the Marlins beat him. And they, and they beat him with the good at bats. Uh, when it happens, when he doesn't finish an inning and he gets beat by the opposition, it's kind of stunning. It's shocking, right? Yep. <laughs> well, he's got at least five innings in every start, but the Marlins have dealt him his three shortest starts of the year, which is odd considering the Marlins' place in the offensive statistics, but those things do happen. This is Harvey's second career start against the Rockies. Faced them here last August and had no decision. A well pitched game. Here's Charlie Blackman. It takes a strike. Blackman had a breaking ball from Henry Mejia out of the ballpark for his second home run of the year last night as a pinch hitter. Getting his 17th start tonight. And there you see the contrast between Matt against the lowly Marlins and against everybody else. Of course, the Mets can say just about the same thing. They, they have struggled with the Marlins more than any other team. And you can look to Steve Carlton, who had nothing but problems against the Mets all most of his yeah. career. Even go back to the 69 Mets, you know, the worst team in the league that year was the Astros, and the Mets lost 10 out of 12 to them. So there are horses for courses. Harvey ahead 0 and 2 on Blackman. It's taken up high. Later tonight, Keith and Ron will have that perspective sitting down low behind home plate. Saw the Braves with the early lead. 14 and a half game lead now for the Braves wow. over the Nats. That is just about over. Over. If uh, they, they blow that one, that would be like go, you're not a hole dig, uh, big enough that you can crawl into. You know, two, two years ago, they did uh, cough up a big lead, the yep. Braves. Yes, they did. did not make the playoffs. And I think that specter still hangs over them and certainly might inform their play right now as they go for their 13th in a row tonight. 2 2 to block, Benny goes down swinging on the fastball. And Harvey has his first strikeout of the night. Overmatch inside right there. I mean, five straight fastballs. That's called trying to keep your hands inside the ball. You know what? I never liked that philosophy. You're going to get jammed once in a while. Swing the bat. Did you bring your hands in like that and it just you're altering your swing. The hit pitchers are going to get inside and get into your pots and pans once in a while. You can't worry about it. Here's Troy Tulowitzki, who generally loves hitting at City Field but didn't have a good night last night. Went 0 for 4. And on this road trip for the Rockies, just 3 for 24 as Harvey throws outside for ball one. Tulowitzki was having a, an MVP caliber year when he got hurt. In early June, and since then uh, the Rockies have struggled, and so has he. Just about a month on the sidelines, but he still has 20 home runs, 62 RBI, so it gives you an idea of the kind of start he was off to. Harvey 
Harvey behind 2 0, and Tulowitzki pops it up. Mike Davis in foul territory, side retired. 1 2 3 inning for Matt Harvey. Mets will come to bat against Jolice Chassin in the bottom of the first with no score. Geico Mets starting lineup for tonight. Since David Wright has been hurt, the Mets have used a different number three hitter the last three days, and Daniel Murphy slides into that slot tonight, and he might stay there for a while. With Lagaris moving into the two hole against Jalice Chassin, well, who is he, ten and five on the year. See the Toyota numbers there. He is just perfect for their ballpark. He's got a great sinker, good slider. He started out three and zero during the year, then went zero and three after he came back off the DL, and has been great ever since. By the way, not showing in those numbers there. He's given up four home runs this year in 21 starts pitching half his games at Coors Field. The former Rocky Eric Young who certainly put it to his old team last night. Takes long away and it's 2 and out. Young went just one for four last night but that doesn't measure his impact on the game. Saved two runs at least with a diving catch to help out Henry Mejia. After Mejia had left the game in the sixth and then had the sprint from second to home on the infield hit by Lagaris for the go ahead run in the eighth. Browns went down to Todd Helton who takes himself for the first down. But we now the course light Colorado Rocky defense. Well we talked about the double plays induced. You see the sinker already. Two whiskey up the middle fine glove. It's kind of been a team in transition here around the infield third base second base. Helton's on his way out looks like so that infield is the only real shining light the foundation of the infield and this ball club is Tulowitzki. Here's Juan Lagares who drove in all three Met runs last night he had a two run triple in the first inning and then that infield hit that he beat out allowing Young to race home with the winning run of the eighth. Chassin can get you to pound it into the ground, can't he? When you ask people who catch Chassin, they will tell you it's like catching a bowling ball. The ball just comes up there and is heavy and sinks at the last second, so you swing where it's not. Well, Chassin has had himself a nice career to this point. He has the lowest ERA of any Rocky starter in history who has started at least 50 games for them. Slow ground ball, Arenado, the rookie third baseman with a strong arm, throws out Lagares for the second out. Well, Manny Gonzalez, who got injured last night, 
is okay, but he's out of the lineup tonight. And so David Rackley has replaced him on the umpire and crew. Tony Randazzo at the plate. Brian Gorman, the crew chief, Larry Vanover, who took over behind the plate for Gonzalez last night at third. But it's good to hear that Manny is okay after taking that shot to his jaw last night. I didn't realize until I saw the replay, and we saw 100 replays, but you know, we're trying to do the job up here. I saw it today, and that he literally pulled the ball out from underneath his mask. Well, we got Mr. Murphy in the third hole, a sixth time this season that Murph has hit in the three hole. I'd like to see Murph become uh, very comfortable in this spot. It's a spot he hit his whole life. Murph was presented before the game tonight with the Heart and Hustle Award. Congratulations. There's an honoree from each team, and it was presented to Murph tonight by the appropriate Heart and Hustle guy, Rusty Stump. It's great. It's always great spending a half hour or so before the game with Rusty. She usually comes up and has a little dinner with us. Hit sharply through the hole, and Murphy's got himself a two out hit. So the first base runner for either side. Murphy's 127th hit of the year. Ball down in the strike zone. Sinker didn't sink much. Got a little towards the end of the bat. Didn't get it away enough. Got Murph to pull it. Mayhew's got some range at second base. Uh, we saw some of the fine plays he made last night and the one he almost made on the guard. Here's the contact keep. Yeah, Murph's keep his eye on the ball. Very nice. Murph's got the big follow through. Keeps both hands on his bat and through his through his follow through. So he's at first with two out. Now Marlon Bird, who hit third last night, back in his more familiar cleanup spot tonight. Marlon went 0 for 4 last night, and right now he is searching for his 100th career home run. Mm. And so it's a little bit of a skid, and I wonder whether those two things Certainly. are connected. He knows. And what was it? How, how long did it take Gary Carter to get? What was it? Was it 300? 300. It took him three months. Jeez. We were all over him. Also, with the right out of the lineup, a little more put on the shoulders of Marlon, who has just been flying high and superb. All season. Murphy with 13 steals this year. John Cena has given up five in eight tries this year. This is that high stretch. It doesn't really stop, does he? No. Nice breaking ball right there. He stops at his chest, which is unusual. Most pitchers today stop at their waist. It honestly makes more sense to stop at your chest because you don't have to take the glove all the way back up. It's an amazing number right there. No runs allowed in the first inning in any of his last 16 starts. One of the reasons he's been such a hot pitcher. One two to Bird. And it's in there for a call strike three. Got him looking at the fastball. So Chelsea has his first strikeout. Matt Harvey hits back to the mound for the second with no score.
My autograph scorecards, folks. So stay tuned until the fifth inning for your chance to win. We've reduced that copy. By the time we get it the next time, it'll be one sentence. I, I, Three I, words. I think that Gary should read them. He reads them with such better inflection and oomph. I thought your first read of that last night, which went on for about five and a half minutes, was your best. <laughs> we missed an inning. That was the only problem. Michael Kadire, first pitch swinging, pops it up to shallow right. On comes Marlon Bird to make the running grab. One pitch and one out for Matt Harvey in the top of the second. You know, Jim, talking to Jim Wright, the pitching coach, he said that Chassin is one of those guys that is all about mechanics. Mechanics. You can see him talking about the slider, getting out in front and getting that ball to go down. Jim Wright, uh, one of the best teachers of the sinker ball, so he and Chassin uh, are a good mix. So that shows me that Chassin's a perfectionist. Yeah. Here's Todd Helton who went one for four last night. He hit the ball that Eric Young caught with the bases loaded to save a couple of runs in the sixth inning. And he takes a strike on the outside corner at the knees from Harvey with two seamen. A little uh, uh, more controlled mechanics from Harvey here early. A lot of two seamers early in the game, not pumping it up to 97 98. Bird is the word. And a curveball in for a strike. Oh, and two to Helton. I thought Greece was the word, but we we'll go to have to go. That was several years ago. The word has changed. <laughs> Here's the 0-2, and Helton fouls it off. Be it's the band that did surfer Bird. Oh. oh. You know, bird is the word. Oh, bird, 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 bird. Yeah, yeah. Surfer bird. I forget. Someone will tell us. I'm sure Dave, Dave will look at all the kids. The young kids at home are laughing at us. Well, actually, uh, Peter Dean? Griffin did a great version of it on Family Guy, so they'd know. Here's the 0-2. Little tapper and Harvey on the backhand has got it. And plenty of time to throw out Helton two away. So Matt's retired his first five. The trash men. See, he quickly found the answer. Our buddy Dave Free. He's always Fresh good. At, he's always good at finding the stuff that's non-sports related. He's he's five and fly. After about the fifth <laughs> inning, you get nothing. So he's good early on, throwing strikes, ready to go. After the hundredth pitch, he's, he's done. done. Two out and nobody on. Willie Rosario comes up to bat. Rosario won for four last night. In the bottom of this inning, we'll have a, an annual treat, and that is the appearance of our kid caster winner. Sponsored by New York's 529 College Savings Program, 12-year-old Johnny Gadamowitz of Greenlawn will be joining us, and we look forward to hearing his performance in the booth tonight. And uh, Johnny came dressed for the occasion. He heard that we were uh, we were dressed in suits and ties today. As Rosario has a base hit, first base runner off Matt Harvey. Did you notice something there? Did you hear the crowd? Well, they expect a no-hitter every time Matt pitches. That's the first time I've heard that. Everyone in the second was in inning. Despair. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. So here's Nolan Arenado with two out in the runner at first. Anyway, when uh, Johnny G joins us uh, next half inning, he will have a great tradition to live up to. The last four years, we have had some spectacular performances by our 529 kid casters. Kyle Singh. Sandwich. Carrie Ann Galante. Home run. Jacob Resnick back to back and JJ Post. What a personality that kid had. And he got one to the warning track. <laughs> he had a nice grab by Stu Cole, the third base coach. That was a tough play. Arenado one for three last night, drove in a run. DJ LeMayhew, the number eight hitter, is on deck. Bucks locates it and then looks down to first a little too late. He looked to second base first. Rosario had made a jab step towards second, and if Buck had looked at first base first, he might have had a chance for him. Well, he did the pickoff last night. So that's the Fowler he got in the first inning. Yep. Very similar play, except on Fowler's ball, the ball rolled to the first base side. So Buck looked to second base first, and by the time he reloaded, it was too late. Rosario has four steals this year. One and one to Arenado. And he 
Bad looking swing on the slider. That is completely pulled right here. It's like, oops, I don't want to swing. Exactly what would happen if you swing a bat in the swimming pool. That swing right there. Remember Greg Jeffries used to swing bats? That's, That's, right. That's right. That was part of his drill. It's like the ultimate weighted bat, right? Here's the one two. Tapper to shortstop. Kinzani has got it and makes the flip to Murphy. And the side is retired. We'll go to the bottom of the second inning, and when we come back, Johnny G will be joining us, our annual Kid Caster winner. No score at City Field. Bottom of the second inning, Ike Davis will lead off for the Mets and leading off for us, Johnny Gadamowitz. Johnny, it's great to have you with us. Thanks, guys. It's great to see you, too. <laughs> the winner of our Kid Caster contest, and I'd like you to dive right in and call Ike's at bat. How about that? All right, well, here's Ike Davis at the plate. Takes the first pitch outside for a called strike. Nice pitch there from Chassin at 89 miles per hour. Ike thought it would have been outside, but took it and called otherwise by the umpire. We'll see if he can come back here. He awaits the second pitch. The pitch from Chassin is outside. Called to strike by the umpire again. And now Ike's in the hole 0-2. We'll see what he can do. Nice pitch there from Chassin. Well before as is on deck. He had his first major league appearance yesterday. Ike takes the pitch for a call ball by the umpire, and that'll bring the count to one and two. Rosario signaling for the pitch. He swings and pops one up on the third base side. Arenado is there, and he'll make the out. One down. Very nicely done. Now, Johnny, yes. tell us about yourself. What school do you go to? Well, I go to Oldfield Middle School in the Harborfield School District. Are you very excited to get back to school, or do you want summer to last uh, another couple of weeks? I hope summer weeks? lasts a little bit longer, but <laughs> I'm looking forward to going back. Now, I understand you had to write an essay to enter the SNY Kidcaster contest, and that you very prominently mentioned your grandfather in your essay. Tell us about your granddad. Yeah, he, he, uh, my grandfather is probably the biggest Mets fan in the world. He's been a uh, he was a Brooklyn Dodger fan way back, but ever since they left, 1962, he's been. Diehard Met fan. I mean, we bleed blue and orange, so <laughs> he, he's, a, he's the biggest Met fan I know, hands down. Well, you are immediately the best dressed kid caster we've ever had on the show. Thanks very much. <laughs> if you folks don't see down there, Johnny's got a nice Mets tie on, too, underneath that nice yeah. little pinstripe gray jacket. 
The hardest part, John, if you sit in my seat, you've got to be about 6'4 to see over the monitor, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm trying it tough. to lean over here. <laughs> Two and two to Loma Flores. So, how long have you been a Mets fan? What's your first Mets memory? I've been a Mets fan since day one. I actually, uh, this isn't my first appearance on SNY. I was back, way back in like 2001. I, I got picked to be the fan of the game. It was my first Mets game, and they were down uh, 13 to one, I think it was, and I was crying. And the <laughs> announcer said, "He just got to look at the scoreboard." And I, I, I got a fan of the game that time. No, so 2001, you predate SNY. You were how old when, in 2000? I was. I wasn't even a year old yet. <laughs> and you already made your TV debut. Well, so oh, yeah. you're, you're a veteran now. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking the Mets had already made him cry. Had <laughs> one year old. <laughs> So you do you remember 2006 when the Mets went to the postseason? I post do. Season? Andy Chavez, that catch over center field, but then Yadier Molina, God, that hit, that, that was maybe one of the worst moments in our family ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. We were all really mad, and then Carlos Beltran struck out looking and ended. It. It, it was hard. So in all of your 12 years, and you've obviously seen a lot, who's your favorite Mets player? Um, well, currently, I would have to say it's a toss up between David Wright and Matt Harvey. Wilmer Flores with his first major league hit. After going 0 for 4 last night, Flores gets on the board and will take that baseball out of play. That's an exciting moment. But, um, all time, I would have to say it would be Mike Piazza. Hit there. Pass ball inside, huh, John? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there have been times in the past when we've had our kid caster on and he's been able to call a home run. Right. But here, it's the first time I think we've ever had a kid caster on to witness a man getting his first major league hit. Oh, yeah. So something exciting always happens. Yeah, that's got a lot of bright young guys coming up. We'll see. John Buck the batter and takes Lowen away. So you said your all time favorite Met is Mike Piazza. Yeah. So will you be here when he is inducted into the Mets Hall of Fame? I hope so. It'll be the last day of the season. That'll be a very exciting day. Yeah. So what about the rest of your family? Uh, are they baseball fans? We're all huge Mets fans. My sister, Carrie, her middle name is actually Shea after Shea Stadium. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. So your parents have something in common with Chipper Jones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you want to be an announcer, right? I want to, yeah, I want to go to college for sports communications and do something like this. Is there any announcer that you try to, you try to emulate? I like all of them, but especially you guys. Okay. Well, you don't have to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a great experience. It's a lot of fun. So do you ever um, do you ever sit in front of a television with a tape recorder or microphone and, and pretend you're a sportscaster? Well, actually, the past few months I've been preparing by just watching the games and putting them on mute and just calling them as they happen, and it's helped a lot. Well, that's very good. Yeah. Our, our games on mute are outstanding. I was going to say that's a very common occurrence. As Buck yeah. drills one down the left field line, and that's a foul ball. You see, when I'm off and Gary and Ron are on, I turn the radio on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding, of course. Yeah, that's that good. way you can hear what's going to happen that's before it happens. <laughs> Johnny, do you play at all? Do you play baseball? Yeah, or? I play baseball. I play second base. Nice. Yep. Can you turn the double play? Yeah, I mean, in, in, in Little League, it doesn't happen that often because the bases, it's only like 75 feet, so it's not that much, but it'll happen every now and then. So you're 12, so you're going to be playing on the big field pretty soon. Yeah, pretty soon. Due to the bump, it takes the breaking ball high, 3-2. Well, do you think that uh, Terry Collins on a full count will send the runner here? Flores with Buck up? Uh, I think it's a risk you got to take, yeah. Okay. 
I mean, the, Met, the Mets, right now it's tied up. Want to put a runner in scoring position. See if he sends it. Good. He doesn't go, and Buck drops one to the center for a base hit. Flores, nonetheless, will go first to third. And the Mets have runners in the corners with one out. All right, Johnny, this hitting is uh, is progressing in a positive way for the men, so you're having a, a very good influence. Yeah. So I think it's time for you to call another batter. Why don't you okay. take over and uh, call Omar Quintanilla as a bat? All right, now here's Omar Quintanilla with runners on the corners and only one out. We'll see if he can drive them in. Rosario out to the mound to have a little visit with Chassin. Omar is batting 229 on the year. He's got two home runs and 14 RBIs. Didn't have such a strong game last night. Went 0 for 3 with a strikeout. But we'll see if he can change that here. Drive in a run. That was great, John. You don't even need Dave Freed for any of those stats. You can do it yourself. Beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> So here's the first pitch to Omar. He takes it low for a called ball by the umpire, 1 0. Quintanilla, not really much of a power factor. He's only got two home runs on the year, but definitely can drive in that run on third. Let's see if he can come through. Runners on the corners. Second pitch to Quintanilla. For a base hit, and he's around to score. Flores rounding, and he's on third. Nice, nice hit there by Omar Quintanilla. So Flores scores, and Buck advances to third, and Omar's on with a base hit. RBI there. Nice job, Johnny. 12 year old Johnny Gadamowitz. See, we, we knew we could get him a run here. That's right. These guys are uh, the young kids that come in this booth are gold. You can just count on a Mets run. <laughs> See now, here's where, where I'm especially impressed. I believe it was um, I forgot who, who our former kid caster was who came in here with a pile of voluminous notes to refer to. Johnny is coming here with no notes, and he knows exactly what everybody did last night. Called it perfectly. Did you memorize everything that happened in the game last night? Well, I did watch the game last night and tried to remember as much as I as much as I could and it worked out. <laughs> You'll find as you get older, that's harder to do. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Harvey the batter with first and third and one out. And he takes a breaking ball strike from Chelsea. Interesting letting Harvey uh, not bunt there, one out. Yeah, I thought he was going to bunt there too. Well, Harvey swings a pretty good bat, John, don't you think? And he's yeah. a threat up there, a big, strong guy. Yeah, I wish he could get some more wins. He gets too many no decisions. Oh. Needs some run support, but he looks like he's got it today so far. Johnny, who was not more nervous today, you or your parents? Well, I wasn't really nervous today up until about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> but I mean, um, I, they were pretty nervous too, but I, I would say me. How you doing now? Yeah, I'm loving it now. I, I'm there proud. You go. Yeah. <laughs> you can take it, you know, the rest of the way if you want. <laughs> <laughs> One and one to Harvey, and he hits a double play ball, but Tulowitzki broke the wrong way. But Mayhew has to make a difficult term, and they get the double play to end the inning. But the Mets get a run. Johnny, terrific job. Thank you. It was great to have you here tonight. Thanks. Johnny Gadamowitz from Greenlaw, New York, our kid caster. Our 529 kid job. caster. Mets get a run and lead it one nothing. Grandpa, he's good. <laughs>
Bank. You can listen to all Mets games on Sports Radio 66 and Sports Radio 101.9 FM WFAN. Day game tomorrow starting at 12 noon. Dylan G will be on the mound for the Mets. Then the Mets head out on an 11-game road trip beginning Friday night in Arizona. Three with the Diamondbacks, three in L.A., four in San Diego, and then a makeup game in Minnesota before the Mets come home a week from Tuesday night to play the Braves. D.J. LeMahieu will lead off for the Rockies as we go to the third inning. Matt Harvey staked to a 1-0 lead on an RBI single by Omar Quintanilla. And the way things have been going for Matt, he has to take the approach of that's my run. Now it's time to run with it. LeMahieu won for four last night, hitting a 268 on the year. And he takes a strike from Harvey. The pitcher Chasin on deck, and then Dexter Fowler for the Rockies in the third. Colorado's had one base runner, a two out single by Rosario in the second. And LeMahieu lines one to left over, comes Young to pick it off. For the first down. So one out and nobody on. Well, we had four in the booth a moment ago with uh, our wonderful kid caster, Johnny Gadamowitz, and Keith and Ron and myself. And well, Johnny left and Keith and Ron left with them. All by my lonesome now. Was it something I said? Keith and Ron have headed downstairs. They want to get a a little closer look at Matt Harvey, and so they're going to get down into the front row behind home plate, and they'll be joining us from down in those close-up seats in just a few moments. Ball to strike to Chasin is a pretty good hitting pitcher, has nine hits this year, and is hitting 209. And Harvey misses outside with the fastball, two and one. Matt is pitching on five days rest. That's one more than. Normal and the numbers will tell you that he has fared better with extra rest. On regular rest, his ERA is 3.08. One extra day, 2.14. More than one extra day, 0.77. He's pitching on one extra day rest tonight, and that's going to stay with the six man rotation for the foreseeable future. Behind the bag at third, long throw for Flores to make right on target, and he gets Chasin for the second out. So the first time that Flores has really been able to show off his arm, he made a throw that Ike Davis had to pull out of the dirt last night, and here throwing from behind the bag to get Chasin and making the play perfectly. So fresh off his first big league hit, Flores makes that play, and there are two out and nobody on. Now Dexter Fowler who flied one to the edge of the warning track and left his first time up. And Harvey throws a fastball by him at 96. Nothing and one. That has not had his high powered electric fastball early in this game. There have been no 98s and 99s. There's a curveball that drops in for a strike and so in two. Steady's relying more on his two seamer. Throwing his four seamer at, at 96, and that's been plenty so far. He's kept his pitch count down early in the game. A head on Fowler 0 and 2. And he comes upstairs one and two. Keeping that pitch count down is becoming more and more important for Matt, not just to get him deeper into games, but also because. What has happened this year is that when he gets beyond 100 pitches, his effectiveness is sag. He strikes out Fowler to end the inning, his second strikeout, middle of the third, one nothing men.
start in tomorrow's Mets Rockies finale with live reports from City Field plus heated debate on all the position battles at Cortland as the Jets get ready for the 2013 season on Loudmouth presented by Caesars Atlantic City tomorrow at 530 only on SNY. Eric Young leads off of the Mets in the bottom of the third. Keith and Ron have made their way down uh, to the. Are you guys in the front row or the second row? I can't. We tell. are the second row. Yeah. Nice seats. <laughs> really right. They're very nice seats. Young grounded out to first his first time up. There are the gentlemen, resplendent in their nice looking suits. Uh, Gary, I didn't get to see it because we were walking down here. Uh, Flores made a nice play at third base, huh? It was a good throw. Had to throw from behind the bag and threw it strong and accurately. Gary, you look resplendent tonight too. Thank you. I think uh, I think Johnny G made the quartet though. He did. <laughs> Two one from Chassin, and the curveball sits high. Two three and one, Nadia. Juan well, Lagares on deck, and then Daniel Murphy in the home third. So you guys get uh, drink service down there. We're not allowed. Ball four and Eric Young is on with a leadoff walk. First walk given up by Chassin. His walks are way down this year. <laughs> by the way the, the man behind the camera is Big Pete. Pistol Pete. Pete if you remember last night was the chef. He's the barbecuer last night. Chef contortionist Pratt Falls he can do it all. Oh, <laughs> what a ham. How many camera guys get on camera? It's outstanding. Here's Juan Lagares who grounded out to third his first time up. Well, let's see if they put a hit and run on here. Lagares, so they, I think they, it was a two and two count when Ike ran yesterday. So that was not a hit and run. Well, this brings back memories for me, Gar. Oh. This view. Garris trying to put a bunt down and fouled it off. Memories of what? Well, just as close as I can get to seeing the ball out of a pitcher's hand. I mean, I'm I'm around what? What do you think? 20 feet, 25 feet away from home plate? Maybe not that quite that close. Maybe 50 feet. You think it's 50? Yeah. I know Keith didn't say it, but on the 2 1 pitch to Young, it was a breaking ball, and he's sitting next to me. And I could tell you he jumped like, boy, he telegraphed that pitch, didn't well, he? Well, it was a roller he threw. He <laughs> threw a nice little hanger. So you can definitely tell here, uh, I love this angle. My focus is on picking the ball up out of the pitcher's hand. Runner goes it on a line to third, and Young will get doubled off as Arenado picked it out of the air. Or did they say that it bounced? Wait a second. Oh, I thought it was oh, on the air. He caught that ball. It definitely looked yeah. like it was in the air. And yeah, there, was, there was no clear signal by the third base umpire, Larry Vanover, but it is indeed a line drive double play. He just picks it off the sand here, the dirt, before it, it hits. Good play by Arenado. And I also think Young did the right thing, too, because he stayed on second base until he got the confirmation. Terry Collins coming out, though, just to ask Vanover what's going on. Well, there's no question that it was a line drive. The problem was that Vanover made no call. And that's what was confusing for Eric Young and for Terry Collins and everybody else. Do you think the angle of Vanover was blocked here being behind Arenado so maybe it became the second baseman second base umpire's call. I think that's what Terry wanted was one to ask for help. Clearly it was the right call so two out and nobody on and now Daniel Murphy who had a base hit to right field his first time up. Well, here's the play right here. We'll take a look at the third base on player on the left. A little late call. He was behind. And Murphy hits it sharply right at Tulowitzki. And that retires the side. So a leadoff walk, and the Mets are done in the bottom of the third. Matt Harvey back to the mound for the fourth. Mets one, Rockies nothing.
Outfield sleepover this Saturday. Watch the Mets road game against the Diamondbacks on the outfield with food and beverages and receive a game ticket to the September 28th Mets Brewers game. To sleep over at City Field, visit Mets.com slash sleepover. And um, I understand that Edgardo Alfonso and Ed Cranepool will be stopping by. And um, in case you're wondering what the uh, after game entertainment will be, apparently um, the game starts at 8 o'clock. Uh, it's five o'clock start in Phoenix. So after the game, they'll be playing the the movie Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs on City Vision. I, I knew Ronnie, you'd want to know that in case you wanted to stop by. Exactly. Charlie Blackman slaps one to short. Quick throw by Quintanilla and gets the speedy Blackman by a stride. One away. We've been lobbying to get you out here to do the pregame show before pre the sleep. Listen, pre and post. Let's let's go all the way. I think. Uh, uh, hopefully maybe they'll be able to do that. You know what's interesting there Gary is that from our vantage point up in the booth you don't realize how fast these guys are down the line. Quintanilla had to get rid of that quickly. Blackman has some great speed. One out of nobody on Troy Tulowitzki fouled out to first his first time and fouls this one off the right side not a play. It's a close play but he just got him. Just a half a step. We always talked about Cantonia playing a very deep shortstop and doesn't have a real strong arm. Good enough arm. But so many times we see him on those ground balls that aren't hit very hard. He has to come in and throw on the run. Lewinsky chased the high slider. Oh and two. <clears throat> slider here from Harvey. You know I'm asked all the time when I meet people for the first time. They always say the same thing to me. Boy, you're very tall. And my joke is I always say we're all tall as far as pitchers are. But down here, you really get to see how big a presence Matt Harvey is on that mound. I mean, we don't see it upstairs. It's it's uh, I mean, he just looks uh, not like a behemoth, but uh, a lot larger here from this vantage point than in the booth. Six foot four, 225. Maybe still growing. <laughs> One two to Tulowitzki. Fastball at 97. That's the hardest pitch he's thrown so far tonight. The one thing uh, that I've seen the last couple of games, and you saw it right here, is uh, I wouldn't say frustration is the right word, but he's such a perfectionist when he doesn't execute the point uh, uh, pitch, it almost seems like he's disappointed. Two two. And he misses with a changeup and a full count to Tulowitzki. First three ball count of the night for Harvey. Those average fastball velocity from top in baseball, and by the way, so for his slider and so for his curveball as well. Oh, got the worst of that foul tip. The way he is limping around, that's one of those sliders off the end of the bat that catches the catcher right on the foot. They are just tough as nails. Oh, right on the instep. That's the uh, almost might have got the inside ankle on the bone on that ankle. That hurts. Uh, Tulowitzki just asked Buck, "Are you all right?" Buck nodded, "Yeah, I'm good." Uh, Tulowitzki seeing if he needed to give him more time. Classy move. You know the umpire, home plate umpire, also wiped the plate for him. That's Tony Randazzo behind the plate. Three and two to Tulowitzki with Michael Kadir on deck. One out and nobody on. Bounces the curveball foul. You know, Gary, I mentioned the size of Harvey, but you know, that post generation after Cal Ripken or Alex Rodriguez and others, uh, Tulowitzki is a, a, a big shortstop also. 6'2, at least 200 pounds plus. Eighth pitch of the at bat and Tulowitzki grounds one down to Flores at third. Talk about your big infielders. <laughs> Throws out Tulowitzki for the second out. Well, he got him with the two strikes and stayed with the breaking ball and finally put Tulowitzki away. Very different look to this Colorado lineup without Carlos Gonzalez, who, when he's played against the Mets the last couple of years, has been almost impossible for them to get out. But Cargo went on the disabled list with that. 
lingering finger injury and so he won't play at all in this series. Now the pitch count low for Harvey so far. He's already gotten four outs with two pitches or fewer and he gets a first pitch strike into Kadair. Well there's been three batters up this inning. All of them have had a conversation with Buck and you know we've been around catchers who don't say a word. Well John Buck is one of those guys that talks to every hitter. Line to center field and Kadair has got a two out hit. So the second hit for the Rockies and both have been singles with two out and nobody on. I wonder uh, Ronnie whether they're just asking him uh, how his wife's doing. Everybody yeah, knows that. That's, that's right. They've been waiting for that baby for the last five days. I just took a photo of Ronnie and I. Gary. A selfie? Yeah from the cell phone. I love that reverse angle you can just so it's for posterity Ron. <laughs> It's not helped it. It would have come back to Harvey's first time up. Foul tips the fastball. Got to be careful with Kadire. He can be sneaky and steal a base every now and again. Harvey has proven from day one, though, that he has a keen idea on how to keep runners close at first. Elton, no match for that change up and it's 0 and 2. It's just hard to be geared up for 95 and get 85 or 87, whatever the miles per hour this changeup was, but perfectly placed. One good thing we can look at, guys, when Harvey's in the stretch, his back knee stays bent when he goes into the stretch and then he stays bent with that back leg. That's very unusual. Most pitchers you'll see will kind of straighten up. He keeps that bent to make sure he gets that good push off towards the plate. Back leg still bent. 0 oh, 2. Strike three call. Got him looking at a backdoor slider. Third strikeout for Matt Harvey. Rockies get a hit and leave one. 1 0 Mets. Lead. It is now time for the Verizon Fios upgrade with Ron Darling. What do you got, Ronnie? Well, I was just going to talk about guys uh, uh, these seats here. What an upgrade from where we usually sit when you think about it. Um, all the way down, we're in the second row. Got a guy next to us that's having a sausage sandwich. You see everything from Coors Light to Stella Artois, a Shake Shack burger and fries. Everything all delivered here. We don't have anything yet, but we might put our order in. But uh, this is quite an upgrade to be down here. I've never sat in these seats before, and they are just uh, crazy good. If I were you, I would definitely take advantage of the waitress service. <laughs> I'll bring something up for you, Gary. Gary, do you feel like Vin Scully up there all by yourself? <laughs> Never. Not one day in my entire life. <laughs> Marlon Bird leads off in the home fourth and takes ball one. By the way, Ronnie's Verizon Fios upgrade report. Verizon Fios making life more entertaining with America's fastest, most reliable internet. That's powerful. Bird went down looking his first time up. Only strikeout for Chasin tonight. 
runs that pitch in on him and he foul tips it one and one. You no, know, you would think this would be a good mark for Marlon. He has a down fastball hitter, a good breaking ball hitter. Those are the two pitches you're going to see featured from Chassin. In the center field, Fowler coming on and gets there. One away. Well, this game is shaping up uh, pretty much as I thought it would to the top pitchers in the league, the National League, Chassin and Harvey, and both kind of doing their thing. And that's the great thing about baseball, isn't it, Keith? Both doing their thing, but in a totally different way. No walks. That's what I like. Yep. Here's Ike Davis, who found out to third his first time up. You know, Chassin was always a high walk guy. Each of the first three years of his career, he averaged four walks or more per nine innings. This year's at 2.5, and he's given some of the credit to Wilson Alvarez. He went to the World Baseball Classic with Venezuela this year. As Ikins went down the left field line over toward the corner, that's an extra base hit. And Davis scampers into second base. Ike on base for the 13th time in his last 16 plate appearances. Two well, doubles last night and a double now tonight. Well, Ike is using uh, a field, a, a portion of the ballpark he forgot all about the first half of the season. And that's let the opposite field. And they're pitching him away. And they're not coming in. And he's going to get the ball away. And he's got to use that part of the field. And that's why he's been successful. So a runner in scoring position for Wilmer Flores who picked up his first major league hit his last time up. Now has a chance for his first big league RBI. Pretty much straight up for Wilmer. A little slight shade. I can't even call it a shade of the opposite field. Popped it up. Elton calling. LeMahieu calls him off. That makes the ground. That was interesting. LeMahieu looked like he wanted that ball all the way, even as Helton was calling for it. Well, one of the things that you get to see and hear down here is that that was a hanging slider. slider. And as soon as Roma Flores popped that up, you know, a couple of little words that you say when you miss a slider that's sitting in the middle of the plate. And that was a real pitch to hit. So two out Davis still at second now John Buck who was single to center field his first time up. Anyway I was saying about Chassin he went to the World Baseball Classic for Venezuela this spring and worked with the, uh, the former terrific big league left hander Wilson Alvarez and he said Alvarez did some major work with his fastball to help him out. Well, why wouldn't you listen to a guy who pitched a no hitter in his second major league start? But I, I think what has happened also, Gary, having 10 wins so early in the season, confidence. And when you have confidence, I know it worked for me. You start throwing strikes. You start to believe in yourself and your stuff. Well, he missed half of last year with a, a strained shoulder. Then came back this year, got off to a good start, but then he got hurt again, missed a couple of weeks, went through a down period. But over the last 10 starts, he's been as good as anybody in baseball. 7 and 2, 2.24 in those last 10 starts. Well, he just looks like a polished pitcher out there, knows what he's doing, confident, there's no nerves. That's something we can't see up in the booth either. Buck takes one the other way through the hole of base hit. Here's Davis around third being waved home. The throw to the plate by Kadire, not in time. John Buck with an RBI single, and it's 2 0 New York. Well, I'll tell you what, Buckets, after the horrific two months after the hot start, has really kind of become more consistent. And there gets a big two strike base hit. Two strike, two out base. Look at the bat right there. Someone's got to get that bat. That's, that's the job of the on deck batter. Someone can get hurt. That's the first thing you do. You go get the bat and clear the, clear the area. 
How about last night when Eric Young scored the winning run the bat was lying across the third baseline about 10 feet from home plate he had to jump over it before he slid into home. You know today's player just does not do it Keith and it's a it, it, it risking injury for your player. Yeah, that was always the one thing you did that was your job in the on deck circle there's a play at the plate. Kenton had drove in the first run of this game with a base hit to right field. Well, think about Ike Davis here he did not slide he just ran through the base because he did not know there's the bat. And Ike catches the play with that back cleat with the heel oh, and almost ran into the umpire. <laughs> <laughs> this is the play from last night. Look where the bat is. Wow. So it just. Now that's kind of a surprise play. It's not a kind of unusual someone scores on a infield ground ball from second base. So I'll give the benefit of the doubt there. But. You've got to clear home plate of that bat. Baseball turned into steeplechase there <laughs> for a minute. At first and two down. Mets now with a two nothing lead in the fourth. The seven and eight hitters have driven in the Mets runs tonight. Antonia backs away one and two. It's interesting on that hit that Chassin gave up the buck. He was ahead in the count. Catcher Rosario called for the pitch up. Buck was able to hit it to right field, and the reaction from Chassin was almost like, "I can't believe you called that pitch. I can't believe I threw that pitch, and I gave up a hit." That's a hit that Buck might not have gotten two months ago, but he's been so focused on hitting the ball up the middle into right field, it's almost like he was ready for it. Well, when you start going the other way, it makes you vulnerable inside. But with two strikes, you have to. That ball wanted to be up and in. It was a bad pitch. I think he's mad at himself. Yep. They wanted it up out of the strike zone, up and in to see if he'd chase, and he put it in a letter high over the middle. Seventh pitch of the at bat to Kinton. And the curveball hit to left center, moving over his Fowler to grab it. And that retires the side. But the Mets tack on a run on John Buck's two out RBI hit. Two nothing Mets as Harvey goes back to the mound for the fifth. There is a noon time start here at City Field tomorrow. Dylan G goes for his eighth one of the year. Tyler Chadwood, who had to be scratched last night with a hamstring injury, slotted back in to make the start tomorrow. As the Mets wrap up their homestand and get ready to head to Arizona, there's Dylan, who has certainly kicked it in gear the last two months. 
and been a very different pitcher than the one that he was early in the season. Or even going back to spring training, his last start a, a brilliant one against Kansas City. Wheelan Rosario leads off for the Rockies as we go to the fifth inning. Is that a KC Monarchs uniform? Maybe. How about the hat? What's that stand for? I have no idea. <laughs> Look at this number. The Rockies against 95 mile an hour fastballs, and look what Rosario has done against the best heat. Now oh, that's interesting. And he's got the lone hit. Oh, that's one of the two hits for the Rockies thus far. The thing we don't see up there, guys, is the change in speed from the slider to the fastball. Is so evident down here mm -hmm. as opposed to upstairs. Popped it up. Flores and Quintanilla. And Quintanilla takes charge. One away. So he didn't throw him a fastball on that at bat. What was that pitch there, Gary? Fastball. No. No? So change, up? change up? Oh, I, change up. I, he was all over that one. Yep. Oh boy, he got away with one there. A little spinner. Got away. One thing also, Gary, the pop-ups. They're up high. They're high. We don't notice them up when they don't get as high as we are up there. I will have to say my eyesight is a little different than 1985. Makes me want to go out there and get a glove on and catch them. So you're saying your eyesight is the same as 1985? Uh, no, it's not, but I can still catch a pop-up. <laughs> Nolan Arenado hit into a fielder's choice his first time and grounds one of Flores has had some traffic at third base tonight. And the low throw handled by Davis two down. So Harvey continues to get his share of quick outs tonight. 52 pitches with two out in the fifth inning. Um, from our angle here, uh, Flores has kind of a funky little delivery with his throw, and the ball has a natural sink on it. Uh, that ball is definitely sinking from third to first base. So two out and nobody on. Now the number eight hitter, DJ LeMayhew, who lined out to Young and left his first time. And fouls off the slider. Another thing, too, Harvey hides the ball well. They can see down here, too, Gary. Ron, correct me if I'm wrong. He's got a little shoulder to lift. Yeah. And comes almost, let's say, not quite three quarters, but a lot of rush late. It's almost like a creaky door and then it slams on. Yep. And from a hitter's perspective, Keith, is that harder to read than the pitcher who's smoother throughout? Well, this is going to end the inning right here. It's he just hides the ball well, Gare. So if you have to wait that split second longer to pick the ball up and you got a guy throwing 97, that makes it very difficult. Seven pitch inning for Harvey. We're halfway through at City Field. The Mets two, the Rockies nothing.
Home fifth inning Mets with a two nothing lead Matt Harvey leads off against Jolice Chassin and takes a strike. Harvey bounced into a double play his first time up. Certainly been an efficient night for Matt so far 55 pitches in five innings and now with a two nothing edge. Shake of the head by Harvey. Just can't believe the number of breaks balls well, he's seeing every at bat. Remember, we noticed early in the season that he kind of pulls away from the ball. He's a middle in hitter. They found out in a hurry. Tries to drop that ball the other way. Well, he's five for 56 now on the year. He got such good swings last year in his rookie season that they came out pitching him a lot tougher right from the beginning this year. Doesn't take long. And he goes down on the slider for the first out of the inning, just the second out. Well, tonight is a momentous night. The WFAN radio engineer, Chris Majkowski, better known as the Immortal, last missed a Mets game 20 years ago today. He's done every regular season and postseason game for the last 20 years, home and road, and being honored tonight for that incredible milestone over 3,200 games without missing a single one. Wow. And how he. And Josh in the radio booth and all of us for SNY salute match for an incredible run. Great work. Eric Young takes high ball one. I had the pleasure of working with Madge for the first 14 of those 20 years. And uh, let me tell you, he may be a curmudgeon, but he's our curmudgeon. <laughs> well, just think of it this way he could do our job, he could never do his job. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, the one you thing. You know what that is? Why? I have no idea what he does. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> At some point, he's plugging stuff in, and I, I don't know, all goes haywire for me after that. Young hits one up the middle of base hit. So Eric Young continues to rock against his old team on base for the second time tonight. Well, we have begun uh, clearing the closets of Keith's scorecard, so let's try and keep doing that tonight, Keith. All right, it's now time to see if you guys can score with Keith. That's me. I will ask a question about my life and time in baseball, and the 17th correct answer that is tweeted at SNY TV with the hashtag score with Keith. Will win one of my autograph scorecards. Today's question is: and it's, it's, a, it's an easy one. In '79, who did I share the National League MVP with? Who was my co-MVP? Go ahead, you tweetsters. <laughs> now I want to know about strategy. If you're trying to tweet the answer, yeah. do you tweet it immediately? Yeah, or really. Do you wait a couple of beats so you're the 17th. It's just like like trying to get the uh, the tickets to a concert when you used to do it on the radio. You got to wait a little bit. No, well, I was a bar understanding that there was over a thousand tweets last uh, last night in the first question, which we was my first number in a big league uniform, my rookie season. And what was it? 18. Oh wow. They give you a number, you take it when you're a rookie. Yeah. 18. Yeah, I was 18 my first year. And no offense to Yogi, but it was my one number I hated the most. I never liked even numbers. I like odd numbers. Well, seven and was your number because of mantle, right? So you yes. had like uh, eight minus one, right? No, and that, and I know I never thought of it that way. <laughs> Juan Lagares is 0 for 2. He lined into a double play with Young on the move his last time up. I thought it was interesting. Terry Collins was talking about batting Lagares second, and he said Dave Hudgens had come up with this idea that hitting Lagares second might teach him a little more plate discipline. Does that make any sense to you guys? Well, he has to take pitches for Young, the speedster. That's kind of to me a double-edged sword. It's asking a lot for a young hitter. Yeah. Uh, but remember when Lagaris came up, Gare, he was a pretty wild swinger and swung at a lot of bad pitches. So they're teaching him plate discipline so I can understand the philosophy that make him maybe take more. He said it, Terry also says he's going to hit with a lot, a lot of times with two strikes because he's in the two hole. It's 
been awfully successful hitting with two strikes. Well, I look at it this way. Uh, I don't want to change anything that he's been doing since July 1st, the month of July and here into August. Uh, he's done just about everything yep. right. So uh, don't make it too complicated. Make it less complicated. If I'm Terry Collins, I'd tell uh, Eric Young, steal the base early in the count. Don't let this kid sit there and get 0-2. I play hit and run, which they did the last time. He drives one to left center field, but cutting across is Blackman, and he picks it off. So Garris hit that ball hard for the second out. You know, Gary, one of the things you hear down here is that he hit that ball on the line, but by the sound, you could tell he didn't catch it. Right. That it was just up on the label, just enough. So two out. Young still at first, and now certainly a good spot for Eric to try and steal one with Daniel Murphy at the plate. Murphy one for two, single to right back in the first. SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. Daniel had a hit between the first base and second base hole, but LeMahieu has not moved over. Still shading a little up the middle and a huge hole between Helton and the second baseman. And the other piece that we saw it last night is you've got the third baseman Arenado playing off the line against Murphy with a sinker ball pitcher on the mound. And especially when Murph gets he's only one strike now but Murph gets the two strikes he almost becomes a left field hitter. And he hits this one out to left but right there waiting for it is Blackman and that retires the side. We've played five now at City Field the Mets and Matt Harvey with a two nothing lead. Community Bank presented a $5,000 check to the Broad Channel Athletic Club, the latest recipient of the SNY Play Bowl Award. The grant will be used to help them replace equipment and uniforms that were destroyed during Hurricane Sandy. To see more of their story and the stories of past recipients, go to Facebook.com slash SNY. Matt Harvey facing Jolice Chassin, who leads off in the top of the sixth. Chassin grounded out his first time up. Harvey misses away a ball and a strike. Matt's given up only two base runners tonight. Two out singles to Rosario in the second and to Gadire in the fourth. And his pitch count very low. Working here in the sixth. 
six plus is undoing in his last start after five brilliant innings against Miami. And he's throwing a first pitch strike to 15 out of 18. Slider just off the plate to Chasin, two and two. Chasin is not a bad hitter, hitting 209 coming into the game, but his heart's not in this at bat off Harvey. He's stepping a mile in the bucket. <laughs> He's got the happy feet in that box. He's hoping for something middle in. I don't. I can't blame him. <laughs> Watch his feet. They're very happy, moving around a lot, just hoping that both feet get down in time to take a swing. Not that time. Slider gets him. Or oh, the fourth strikeout for Harvey tonight. It's been a different kind of night for Matt. Certainly in terms of his pitch count and his strikeouts. Nice seat here, right, Keith? I mean, uh, it's uh, second row. Yes. They've left us all alone. <laughs> uh, we. I wonder, did I shower today? <laughs> I, there was four people here before. Now they've left. So from that incredible vantage point, guys, what are your impressions of Harvey tonight, and compared to what you see from up top, and maybe what you've seen on other nights? Well, I think Keith made the great point. You don't see how he is so slow. And then there's a jump at the batter and I think that is part of what makes him so difficult to pick up is that when he jumps at the very end you just don't know which pitch is coming. And for you fans fans that don't understand what jump is he's very slow back with the leg kick and all of a sudden big shoulder kick and a, and a rush at you and that's the jump and he hides the ball well it's hard to pick up he's throwing 97 95 plus plus he's got a great breaking ball and a Outstanding changeup. It's that's why he's one of the top pitchers. I think the thing I've been uh, marveling at all season long, though, is that there's many dimensions to how Harvey can get you out, depending on a start. There's been some that from pitch one, you know, it's going to be a big strikeout night. Um, in this game right here, he started out with just a lot of two seamers, making sure he was throwing the ball to the corners, almost like let's keep this pitch count down. I'm not going to go for the strikeout. I'm just going to go for contact. So it's a, you know, to have the ability in his first full year to kind of read himself in the bullpen or what he takes out to the mound in the first inning and decide how he's going to play it. It's pretty impressive. 2-2 two, two to Fowler and he lifts one to center. Ligaris doesn't have to move much. Now there are two out. You know, Gary, also another thing, and Ron. Matt's going around the league now. And they understand that the stuff's pretty extraordinary. And that you can't swing for the downs off Matt Harvey. And so you're going to find the hitters uh, being a little more compact. They're the scouts here that are following these two teams. Uh, probably observing Harvey very much tonight, but as a hitter, when you've got a pitcher that throws bullets and has great breaking ball, you can't go up and swing for the downs every every pitch and of, of your forward bats against him. So you're going to find a lot of hitters that are going to not, uh, shorten up, be more compact. To me, it's almost scary. Like Harvey has decided that I'm not uh, defined by 98. I'm defined by being a pitcher that can be unpredictable. Well, part of the consequence of that, and we saw a bit of that in the graphic we showed a moment ago, but this is now Matt's fourth start since the All Star break. In those four starts, one walk. 29 strikeouts and one walk since the All Star break. That's extraordinary control. I mean, for a guy who has his kind of electricity at times, to have that kind of control, that's very rare. Lewinsky would be next. Flagman tonight is over two. And he slaps one to shortstop. Kinton is right there. Another one, two, three inning for Matt Harvey. He's retired seven in a row. Six scoreless for Harvey in a two-nothing med lead.
question. If you think you can stump Gary, tweet at SNY TV with a trivia question and the answer with the hashtag stump Gary. Good luck, Gary. I'm pulling, you, for, I'm, I'm pulling for you. Well, you know, since we're in separate venues now, you won't be able to flash me the answers. <laughs> oh, we never do that. You wouldn't allow it. <laughs> no. How he would. He would. I know. He tried to cheat that one night. Went for the book. He'd snatch it out of his hand. Well, a guy who says put it in the books, I guess he's going to go to the book. <laughs> Marlon Bird grounds one to the left side. And Arenado takes his time and throws him out by a stride. One away. Time to check in with the studio. Gary Apple is there for a game break presented by your local Tri Honda dealers. That is the Nats' only hit so far tonight. Meanwhile, um, an ugly moment in uh, St. Louis. We're on the second pitch of the game thrown by Shelby Miller. Carl Crawford hit a bullet back to the box off Miller's pitching elbow. And the Cardinals stellar young pitcher had to leave the game. Mike Davis continues his hot run. Double to left scored a run in the fourth inning. Mike's now been on base 13 of his last 16 plate appearances. One one from Chelsea and Davis hits it in the air to right field. That goes Kadir. No have room. And that's the second out. Let's check in with Eamon McEnany. Eamon. Well, Gary, I had a chance to talk to Ike Davis earlier today about his rising on base percentage and his rising batting average. And he said it starts with better plate discipline and seeing the ball better, which is something Keith mentioned last night during the telecast that Ike now knows when he goes to the plate, he's going to be pitched like a guy who hit 32 home runs and not a guy who's hitting under 200. So he has to remind himself and make sure to lay off the pitches that they want him to chase. But he also mentioned another factor. He says now he's putting himself in a better position to hit. And I asked him to translate that to us civilians who have never been in the batter's box. And he said that before he was trying to hit the ball. Now he's allowing his body to react to what the pitcher is giving him. And you talk a look, take a look at all his numbers and the improvement. The one that jumps out to me as far as hitting the ball, Gary, before the All-Star break, a total of eight extra base hits. Now since the All-Star break, he already has nine extra base hits with his double tonight. Well, what I see tonight, Eamon, is the fact that Ike is beginning to wait a little better. He's not lunging as much, and that's the key. And when he says there's a ground ball, he'll be a close play. Arenado throws out Flores. Go ahead, Keith. Well, it's just that he's winning at the plate, becoming more relaxed. When you rush everything, you lunge, you swing at bad pitches. He's starting to slow it down, and it, he's playing every day, and he's getting results. Six in the books at City Field, two nothing New York.
only struck out four in the first six innings tonight. Not one of his bigger strikeout performances, but he has been right on his game nonetheless. He's faced just two over the minimum over the first six innings and working on a two hit shutout. And now he takes them out for the seventh inning, having thrown only 70 pitches tonight. Three, four, and five in the Colorado batting order. Tulowitzki, Kadire, and Helton will come up against Matt in the seventh. Gary, when Tulowitzki was on the on deck circle while Harvey was warming up, he did not take his eyes off one warm up pitch of Harvey. Watched the entire warm up. To me, that is something you usually don't see from a hitter. Concentrating on every single warm up of Harvey. It's interesting. Harvey's worked Tulowitzki away, predominantly away, and I mean like 90% away. And he rolls over that breaking ball. Flores in rhythm. One out. Eight in a row retired by Harvey. Well, we've seen what Tulowitzki can do in this ballpark when you pitch him middle in. That series two years ago when he homered in four straight games in a four game sweep. Kadire has one of the two hits for the Rockies tonight. Single to center field with two out in the fourth. Kadire began the day third in the National League in batting. Behind Chris Johnson of the Braves and the injured Yadier Molina. 96 from Harvey, nothing and one. Keith, what Ronnie was talking about before an on deck hitter having his eyes glued to every warm up pitch. Mm -hmm. Is that something you used to do? I used to watch a pitcher warm up and I'm, he didn't have to be in the on deck circle. You always watch, I've set it up in the booth. You watch, if you're a right hand hitter, you watch from the dugout. If you're not in the on deck circle, how up the right hander is pitching every right hand hitter in the lineup? Mr. Helton just waved over here. You first baseman, you're so tight. We, we had Joey Votto do the same thing when you were sitting down there a couple of years ago. Uh, yes, I remember that. So, yes, you have to observe. And um, the one thing with the new ballparks today, with the, they want to have more seats for the fans to enjoy, a better viewing. The dugouts are more towards first and third base, uh, not so much back. I used to love the dugouts that were further. At the closest angle to home plate. Pittsburgh was like that. Yeah, yeah, Pittsburgh, San Diego. And you'd hug as close as you can so you can get a good angle and try to see what the pitcher's trying to do to a left hand hitter. One two from Harvey. Pass the mound. Kid Denea behind the bag. And he gets Kadire. Two down. Cold Heart Facts brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Well, since 1900, there are only half a dozen pitchers who've had more strikeouts through their first 32 career starts than Matt Harvey, including you, Darvish, who is painting that number right now. Darvish is the only pitcher in the major leagues this year with more double digit strikeout games this year than Harvey. Darvish has eight, Matt has six. Mm -hmm. well, ball to start off held in 0 1. Dwight, I think, had 30 starts his rookie year in 84, 276 punch outs, and Remember in September of that year in a three game stretch at 43. Elton laid on the fastball after he threw him a curve to start him off. 97, that's where he's topped out tonight. And I just think Ronnie made a good comment last night about Helton. He just doesn't have the bat speed. I know he's geared on fastball, and Harvey just threw that outside corner fastball right by him. That's something you couldn't have done to him 10 years ago. Go to to Helton. Struck him out. Blazer. Strikeout number five for Harvey. He set down ten in a row. On his game tonight. Two nothing at the seventh inning stretch.
production from the bottom of the batting order. Three straight hits in the second. Omar Quintanilla with the RBI, and then John Buck, the two out RBI hit in the fourth. And that's been plenty for Matt Harvey tonight. He's thrown seven scoreless innings with only 81 pitches. Buck leads off in the home seventh. Two for two tonight. Single to center, single to right. He has 57 RBIs now, three behind Marlon Byrd for the club lead. Buck, Quintanilla, and Harvey for the Mets against Chassin. And the breaking ball fouled off. One and one. That last fastball to Todd Helton that Harvey threw, guys, how did that look from down there? Uh, it was just, um, I, I mean, explodes. Uh, that fastball when it's upstairs, when it left his hand, um, Helton just had no chance. You know, it's a, there's a different feel when he lets it go. And that was one of those. You know, he had shaken off Buck from a curveball, fastball away. He wanted it in. Explosion up and in. Just no chance for the veteran first baseman. Buck chases the slider and strikes out. Just the third striker for Chassin. And how about this game? You know, we've talked so much about the prevalence of strikeouts in the game today. Here you have two ace pitchers, both pitching extremely well. Between them, they've only struck out eight tonight, and yet they've been on their game. Well, you've got one throwing a two hitter, the other one scattering seven hits, and there's no base on balls. This has been very efficient pitching. And, and Corpus will get up in the Rockies bullpen with John Cena do a fourth in the next inning. You know, from our seat here, and we can see it upstairs also, only because we played for those many years. But down here, guys, there's a purpose with every pitch by both pitchers. Uh, we've seen some shaking off to go to a pitch that's been effective. Um, each pitch, you know, if he throws a, a sinker away, he comes back with a fastball in. They uh, they really have an idea of what they're doing. No caveman pitching here, as Bob Apodaca, the old Colorado Rockies pitching coach, would say. No, give me ball, see ball, throw ball hard. This is placement. And if if you're a young pitcher on either side, say a Zach Wheeler on one side, uh, a uh, Tyler Chadwood on the other side. What can you learn from watching these two guys pitch tonight? You know, Gary, it, it tells you that you don't have to grunt and groan and overthrow and try to blow people away. It's all about precision. It's all about tempo. It's all about throwing the ball where you want to throw it. Each pitch setting up the other. If you are going, let's say, for example, so and two, you want to throw a fastball in. If you don't throw it in, it has not set up the rest of the bat for you. So you're going to have to double up in. That's what these guys are doing here. As Walt Weiss looking incredulous, he thought that Quintanilla went around. So I see right at 100 pitches for the night. And Quintanilla with a late swing stays in the at bat. Hinton and drove in the Met first run tonight with a base hit in the second. Let's look at that check swing again. Well, Larry Vanover said he did not, and I have to agree. Ronnie, what do you think? Oh, he went. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, that's strike three called, so Chassin gets the strikeout. Nonetheless, back to back strikeouts for Chassin to start the seventh. You know, we can go back underneath there and settle this. Uh, no, I have no problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> Go old school on each other. This is something you just don't see enough in today's game, isn't it? The starting pitcher getting it at bat late in the game and getting an ovation from the home crowd. Uh, it's also paying attention to the game, watching him on the on deck circle, and couldn't wait to give him a hand. And Matt is having all kinds of uh, issues with that breaking ball. Two. And Jesse misses with a fastball. Jesse, by the way, is throwing harder the seventh than he has all night. He put a little something on that one. And he strikes out Harvey to end the inning. Jesse strikes out the side in the seventh. Harvey heads back to the mound for the eighth, working on a two hit shutout.
contender for MVP right now in the National League. SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. Well, Matt Harvey's allowed just two base runners in the first seven innings. A two out single by this guy, William Rosario, in the second, and a two out single by Michael Kadire in the fourth. Since then, he's retired ten in a row. Rosario leads off the eighth, one for two on the night. My first pitch. Breaking ball, nothing in one. Well, they're very much aware of Rosario, fastball hitter. Got a hit off the fastball in the second, hasn't seen one since. When you're playing in a shutout, I'm talking about the guys defensively behind Harvey. It's not a no hitter, but you're on your toes like that because it's a shutout. Two nothing game, anything. Uh, can go wrong, so you're on your toes to make every play. There's a fastball up and in. Ooh. Nothing yeah. at two. All those guys, you can pound them inside. Don't look at that. Tied him up. Look at him bring his right arm in to try to adjust to being buried inside. Let's see if he doubles up in there. No, he goes to the curveball. No two. Struck him out. Number six for Matt Harvey. One down in the eighth. Quick work. Well, I hate to use this word, but this is like being bullied. Uh, fastball in, and then you become so conscious of that fastball that you have to get that head of the bat out and embarrasses you a little bit. Tough. No one out and nobody on. Now, Nolan Arenado, who's 0 for 2, twice has hit the ball on the ground tonight. Harvey's got 10 ground ball outs in this game. Don't get the leadoff man on. It's awfully hard to score. One and one to Arenado. Well, the goal here for Matt, in addition to putting up a zero here in the eighth, is to keep his pitch count low enough that he can go out there and try and complete this game, something he's never done in the major leagues. He does have a nine inning stint to his credit. That was that wonderful game he pitched against the White Sox when he allowed just one hit in nine innings. But didn't get the victory because it took 10 for the Mets to win that night. Wow, those unbelievable numbers. Arenado lifts one down the right field line over toward that short fence, and Bird reaching at the last moment can't get to it. That angled short fence is so difficult, and as Murphy and Bird both got there, or just didn't have enough time. You can get hurt there too. Yeah. You know, you're kind of hitting you right in your waist. You can get a back injury. Right, look at Bird right there. You can hurt your back. You're not careful. And if you go over that, it's only cement uh, past that little wall. You know, if you were to topple over, party over. That fence is coming to play from the very first game that was played here at City Field. I just knew that that was going to be a difficult spot. In the ballpark. One two to Arenado. Slow ground ball toward the hole. Flores can't get it. Kim today a can and he throws him out. No, he's called safe. The first base umpire, David Wackley, said safe. He appeared out from here, and Terry Collins will come out to argue. Rackley, a rookie umpire. I thought he beat it. It's a tough angle for us right here. Well, I think he's out. Yep. He had a very strange stride toward first yeah, base. He's, he's, out, he's but he was out. Hurt. It's almost like he was leaning backwards to touch the base. It's almost as though he had miscalculated his steps and just tried to stretch yeah. for that extra little bit on that last stride and slowed him down a little bit. And that might have confused the umpire. That was almost looked like the, the ministry of silly walks there up the first baseline. Here's DJ LeMayhew. So that's the third hit for the Rockies. Mayhew was 0 for 2, lined out and grounded out, and he takes a strike on the outside corner. He should have added umpires with the group of defensive players being ready to make the play at all times. Lemay 
Mayhew. It's a double play ball to Quintanilla. To Murphy for one. Double play. Side retired. Mets get an unfortunate call. Harvey makes up for it by getting the double play ball from LeMahieu. Eight scoreless innings for Matt Harvey. 2 0 New York. TNT trivia question. Let's see if the viewers are able to stump Gary. Which rookie batter broke up Rocky batter, excuse me, broke up Tom Glavin's eighth inning no hitter in 2004? I know this one. Very you good. Do. Great. This was Kit Pello. What? Kit Pello. P E L L O W. Kit Pello. Kit Pello. This is Manny Corpus <laughs> is going to pitch the bottom of the eighth inning for the Rockies. Well, Manny Corpus, uh, Corpus had that amazing year in 2007 as their closer when they won 21 out of their last 22. But he has certainly fallen on hard times. Eric Young's been on base twice tonight, a single and a walk, one for two. Well, we'll see if Gary gets it. I'm sure he does. Yep. Kip? I wouldn't lie to you. No, what do you I, I feel like Alex Trebek. Did you spell it right? Or oh, we'll put it in the form of a question. It sounds like a character in a Zane Gray novel. Kit Pello. <laughs> Young lifts one to right field and Kadire's right there with it. One away. Well, Matt Harvey's going to get a chance to do something he has never done in the Major Leagues. Actually, two things. He's never thrown a complete game. And he's never thrown a shutout. And he'll have a chance to do both those things when he takes them out for the night. He's only thrown 91 pitches through eight innings. Three base runners. He's faced just two over the minimum. Here's Lagares, who's 0 for 3. He's lined out his last two at bats. Edgemer Escalona, next man up in the Rockies bullpen. The Mets have had only one complete game this season, and it was a complete game loss. A memorable game. Right before the Harvey Wheeler doubleheader in Atlanta that got this Mets hot streak going, Dylan G carried a, no -hit, a uh, shutout into the ninth inning in Atlanta. And lost two to one on the Freddie Freeman two run homer. Eight eight in the third complete game loss for G, and that's the only complete game by a Mets starter this season. So Harvey will try and change that. 
three and oh now to Lagaris with Murphy on deck. And that's inside ball four and Lagaris is on with the one out walk. Only the second walk of this game. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by State Farm. Tonight, State Farm agent of the day is Pat Cauley of Glendale, New York. Contact Pat's office at patcauley.com. By Brooklyn Burger, the premium steakhouse burger, and the official burger of the New York Mets. And by Bud Light Lime, summer is calling. That's looking for some insurance for Matt Harvey here in the bottom of the eighth as Daniel Murphy steps in. Murphy is one for three, singled back in the first inning. Jolice Chassin certainly did his job tonight, allowed just two runs and seven hits over seven innings, but the way Matt Harvey has pitched, that might be enough to beat him. It's like one of those if the game ends up two nothing, those little old wire stories you'd read AP. And the Harvey outduels Chassin. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> By the way, just to give a measure of how well Chassis pitched tonight, since he hurt his shoulder last year, this was his 31st start. It's only the third time of those 31 starts he's thrown over 100 pitches. He threw 106 tonight and struck out the side in his last inning. Yeah. And like you said, Gary, he was throwing harder in that last inning than he did at any other point in the game. Murphy takes a sinker low and away from Corpus, two and one. Andy Corpus used to have electric stuff, electric stuff, but those times are are gone. You can win a trip for four to Universal Orlando Resort. Enjoy all the action in front of Universal's two amazing theme parks and stay on site at the electrifying Hard Rock Hotel. Just go to SNY.tv slash Toyota and enter the Toyota Fan Flyway Sweepstakes for your chance to win. Lagaris at first and one out. 31 year old Manny Corpus in his second tour of duty with the Rockies, pitched for the Cubs last year. This is a way to Murphy after walking Lagaris. He's now behind three and one on Murphy. I gotta believe that Lagaris now will be put in motion. Not going. Wow. And Murphy lifts one to left center. Blackman is over. And that's the second out. Garris back the first two away and Marlon Bird coming up. In the ninth inning, the Rockies will have eight, uh, nine, one, and two in the order. So the pitcher spot then Fowler and Blackman as Matt Harvey bids for his first major league complete game and shutout. Bird tonight is 0 for 3, now just two for his last 21. Takes a fastball strike. Carlos Gonzalez on the disabled list now. They kind of dillied and dallied with that move over the last week or so. Re injured his finger on Sunday and they finally decided today to disable him. Bird drives one to deep center field. Fowler going back. It's over his head. Hops over the wall. That'll cost the Mets a run. Lagaris will have to stop at third. Well, he was going to easily score from first base had that ball stayed in play, but it bounced over the wall, hit the iron railing for a ground rule double, and Lagaris will have to go back to third. Very unfortunate break here. Oh, just a hanging slide piece sitting on a tee saying hit me and just got a bad break. The call by Larry Vanover. By the way, uh, watching Larry Vanover there, it reminds me, we misidentified the umpire who missed the call at yes. first base in the last half inning. The uh, umpires were listed as having Brian Gorman at second. That, of course, is Brian Gorman, the crew chief, umpiring first, and it was he 
who made the incorrect call on the infield hit by Nolan Arenado in the top of the eighth inning. So our apologies to David Rackley. Well, this should be a pretty good matchup. They're going to walk Ike. That's unfortunate. Now, the way he's been swinging the bat it makes perfect sense. They'll go after the rookie Flores instead with the bases loaded. So Ike will reach base for the second time tonight. 14 of his last 18 plate appearances now he will reach base. He had a double and scored a run in the fourth inning. And so Wilmer Flores will get a chance to drive in his first big league run. On the same night he has picked up his first major league hit. It's Walt Weiss. You're going to get your first big league hit. If you're going to go for your first big league homer, why not do it with the bases loaded? You know, we talked last night about how nervous Wilmer might be, and he kind of said that after the game last night that he tried a little too hard. What is that second day like? And does it matter whether you've gotten your first hit yet? Oh, it matters. Uh, when you get that first hit, it takes the whole uh, the weight of the world off your shoulders, Gary. You carry that over four home with you that night after that first game you play and you don't it doesn't you don't feel like you can take a deep breath until you get that first hit. Well he's got that under his belt now. He's but one it, for three tonight. This is an RBI opportunity for him now one of the few he's had so he's got a little butterflies he's not settled in yet it takes a while to get settled into the big leagues. Ligaris at third. Bird at second, Davis at first with two on. Mets up two nothing in the bottom of the eighth and looking to increase their margin. Flores at 15 home runs, drove in 86 runs for Las Vegas before his call up. Oh, he goes after the first pitch, nothing at one. Drop Laredo on him. Mule Blackman, Blackwell. <laughs> Couldn't get him to chase one on one. Base is loaded, two down, one and one to Flores. And he ignores low, two and one. Corpus is doing his best here to be in the uh, human rain delay. <laughs> now he's 2 1, and Flores takes a strike 2 2. Well, Flores, who yesterday celebrated his 22nd birthday, coinciding with his big league debut. Now trying to give Matt Harvey a little more breathing room before he takes the mound for the night. Two two from Corpus, and he lines one. Face it. Lagaris is in. Bird will score. Davis being waved home. It's a three-run double for Wilmer Flores on the Mets of a five-nothing lead. Flores' his first three major league RBIs come on a bases clearing double. Drop sidearm on him, fastball, turns on it up and in. Nicely done. That gets his RBIs out of the way here. Big day for, for Wilmer. And Ike, I know what's Ike in the backside here. Ike gets running and gets a little ahead of steam. He's not a truck horse, he runs well. Cut the bat nice, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. To get that bat out of the way. He's been running this year better than ever. So now the Mets with a 5 0 edge in the eighth, and here's John Buck. So that gives the Mets the breathing room they wanted and gives Flores three marks in the RBI count. Wonderful, wonderful. And that man loves it right there.
Those two out ribeye steaks. They're sweet. Especially when they come three at a time. <laughs> now they intentionally walk Davis to get to Flores and Flores makes them pay. First game he said I was just trying too hard. Relaxed a little in the second game. And what a game. A couple of hits and three RBI. Well, last night the three RBIs were by Lagares. Tonight, Flores. I talked to Flores before the game last night. I said, Who were your baseball heroes? And he said, He smiled. He said, Edgardo Alfonso. Oh, wow. He said, I used to go with my dad to watch him play winter ball for Magallanes, his hometown team in Venezuela. He said, He was always my guy. Of course, Fonzi was a big guy to drive in a key run. Two and two to Buck. That's uh, the proper person to emulate, right? As a hitter. David Ardsma up just in case in the Mets bullpen. Doesn't even have his glove on yet. <laughs> Matt Harvey, I think, is expecting to get the final outs. Two two to Buck. And it's in tight three and two. By the way, Flores got to play for uh, Edgardo's older brother Edgar his first two years in the Mets farm system, so. Just solidified his bond with the Alfonso family. Now the 3 2, and Buck grounds one to third. Arenado makes the play, side retired, but the Mets tack on three in the bottom of the eighth. Wilmer Flores with a two out bases loaded double. Flores' second big league hit produces three runs. Now Matt Harvey takes a 5 0 lead into the ninth at City Field. Matt Harvey tries to go a place where he has not been yet, looking for his first major league complete game and his first major league shutout. Corey Dickerson will be the pinch hitter to lead off in the ninth inning for Colorado. Dickerson started last night in left field and went one for four. It'll be Dickerson, then Dexter Fowler, and Charlie Blackman for the Rockies in the top of the ninth. Keith and Rod have been watching most of this game from the second row behind home plate. And Watching Matt Harvey spin his magic. And he has been doing that. 
I, I think the one thing we've seen the entire game is um, uh, all business, never change of expression. Um, it's pretty fun to watch, to tell you the truth. Just very serious about his craft. Well, 93 pitches, and Gary, he is throwing bullets. Fowler on deck. That's a good looking hook to get ahead on Dickerson, one and two. To me, the Helton at bat to end the seventh was the one where he said, you could just feel it. I'm going to turn it up a notch. I want this shutout. I want a complete game. You know, a pitch he hasn't used that much tonight, Ron Garrett, was that pitch right there, the down curveball. And that, to me, I thought it was a lot slower from our view. It is really a hard curve that breaks sharply down. One, two. A little tapper. Hit to the end to get it. One out of the night. Saw on that graphic a moment ago. The last complete game shut out by a Met pitcher was Ari Dickey, August 31st of last year. Dickey had three shutouts last year. And now Harvey trying to get his first. Here's Fowler, who's gone 0 for 3. The Rockies have had only three base runners tonight a two out single by Rosario in the second, a two out single by Kadire in the fourth, an infield hit by Arenado with one out in the eighth. And Fowler will match it on the fastball, nothing in one. I don't care what it said, that was the best fastball I've seen down here. Here's the outs, ground, ground outs, fly outs, and strikeouts. 13 ground outs match his career high. Another number, and in comes Quintanilla, two out. 14 ground ball outs for Matt Harvey tonight. And now, two out of the night. Ever since we've met Matt Harvey, he's been preaching that he wants to complete games. He wants to go nine innings. Here he is in his 33rd start. Triple figure one. Two outs, two strikes, and his 100th pitch of the night just coming now. Line off Harvey and into right field, a base hit. That a bullet off the bat of Blackman. Did you guys see where it hit yeah, him? Yeah, hit him on his inner thigh, I think, and I think it hurt him. He winced. Inner thigh or knee. I thought it got him on the left knee. Uh, Ray Ramirez and Terry Collins instantly out to see it. Let's watch. Right knee. Yeah, Sorry. Off the outside of the right knee. Ball oh. right off the top of that kneecap. Ouch. Now he throws one warm up pitch and waves them away and says he's fine. It'll, it will be fine until about five minutes from now. Well, we gave you the news earlier tonight about Shelby Miller getting struck on the elbow by a line drive off the bat of Carl Crawford. Harvey appears to be a, bit, a little luckier here. It's the fourth Colorado hit coming on his 100th pitch. Now to Lewinsky. Mm. Well, he's going to have to ice that knee up when this game's over. If he caught that above the knee, Keith, yep. and the lower kind of leg, he might be all right. The kneecap is the problem. Slider outside to Lewinsky. This is the point in Harvey's pitch count where he's running into trouble. From pitch number 101 forward, the batting average against Harvey is 419.
There's a strike two and one. Still executing. Well, that's one thing Harvey can do, Ron, is that he can really paint that knee high outside corner to the right hand hitter. All right, it's and Feliciano staying ready just in case as Harvey tries to secure the final out. Two and one to Tulowitzki. And he bounces the slider. Three and one. He has not walked a batter tonight. This is only his second three ball count of the game. <laughs> There's a strike as Blackman takes second on defensive indifference. And again, the Rockies are down to their final strike. Had a runner at second base all night. So Harvey and Buck making sure they're on the same page. Three two. Popped it up. Mike Davis calling. Gives way to Murphy. And the ball game is over. Matt Harvey throws his first career shutout. A complete game four hitter. No walks. Six strikeouts, 14 ground ball outs, a magnificent performance from Matt Harvey. Wilmer Flores contributes a three run double, and the Mets win it 5 0. They've taken the first two of the series from the Rockies. Well, what was great about that is that after that pop up by Tulowitzki, Harvey pointed to Buck and said, You did it, man, as they share that great and first shutout. For Harvey here at City Field. Well, it's all Matt Harvey night, but on the offensive side, you had three RBIs from Lagares last night, and that win. And now Wilmer Flores gets his three RBIs, had a big day, two for four, got the three RBI double with the bases loaded, two outs in the ninth inning that really gave the Mets the big cushion they needed. Well, Harvey survives a shot off his knee with two out in the ninth inning to get the final out and complete a game for the first time in the major leagues and a shutout to boot a four hitter as Flores gets his first two big league hits and drives in three the game summary presented by New York's 529 college savings program for every Mets win the Mets foundation is proud to contribute twenty five hundred dollars to the Cats Women's Hospital and the Cats Institute for Women's Health for more information visit North Shore LIJ dot com slash K I W H the win brings the total contribution so far this season to one hundred twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars a magnificent performance by Matt Harvey for his first career shutout as the Mets win it five to nothing more from City Field in just a moment. Thank you.